Praise the Lord. We'd like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. We pray that you'll be blessed today by our message. And the message is just entitled, It's Going to Be Okay. It's going to be all right. Amen? Amen. Because a lot of things are wrong. Amen. In the world we live in today. Now I'm going to be uh, speaking a little bit about the enemy of our soul, that is the devil. But I start out by saying this, by no means do I give him any credit or glorify the devil by any means. But we need to know about the enemy of our soul who comes to rob, kill, and destroy. We need to know and be aware. And if you do know, we need to refresh ourselves and bring back to memory, amen, just how wicked and ruthless he can be. Can I get an amen? Amen. We don't have to worry about the God that we love and serve and our Savior Jesus Christ because it's all good. Amen? The good always takes care of itself. So we need to really concentrate on who's trying to disrupt our life. Who's trying to destroy our marriages? Who's trying to uh, mess with our finances? And all these other things. This is the reason why the Lord put this message on my heart because we need to know at least be warned and be aware of the enemy amen that wants to do you nothing but harm and hopefully he would like to see you end up in hell that's his hope that's his job amen it's your job to make sure that don't happen amen praise the lord so just because the world is coming on glue doesn't mean that we have to be coming on glue. Amen. Mm-hmm. And make no mistake about it, the world is coming on glue. Oh. Very little glue left, hello? Yes, amen. When you see what's happening around the wow. globe now, around the globe, the world has become one very small neighborhood. That's right, it certainly has. Used to take back in the horse and buggy days, it take a month to get a message across from one end of the country to the other. Uh, now it's at the speed of light. Mm-hmm. As it happens, mm-hmm. so all that technology is being used for good and for evil. And for evil, right? All that technology. You wonder how? I mean, they just found out that uh, almost all Americans have been being spied on now for the last eight years. Eight? All your conversations have been being recorded. All these kind of things. You wonder how the Antichrist is going to control eight? everything and have everybody's uh, life in the palm of his hands, so to speak. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's no wonder. They're working towards that goal. You wonder why uh, they're fighting our president as I speak of doing good things? Because they want a one world order. They want a one world government. That's right. Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen. I just hope we ain't here to see it. Right. Yeah. Rapture takes place. But all these things are coming upon us. They're not just coming. They're here. And when we see what's coming, I mean, that we, we would not have our ha- head in the sand. We need to be alert. We need to be on watch. We need to be prayerful. Amen. And we need to know the times of the season that we're living in, spiritually speaking. So we see that all these things are coming upon us very rapidly. Mm-hmm. We see we see all these, these, these technologies coming to pass that it blows your mind. They, they, they happen so fast. You buy a, a phone today for five, six, seven hundred dollars, whatever it costs, it's out of date tomorrow. Because the technology is moving so quick. Ooh, and the church, the body of Christ, is kind of caught up in a lot of this uh, fast-paced living. It's easy to do. You know, it's easy to lose focus sometimes. And that's why the Bible says in the last days there'll be a great falling away. That's yeah. right. Of believers. They are. There is. You got to be in to be able to fall away. You got to, he's got to be a believer to be able to be a non-believer, fall away after that. Mm-hmm. Jesus didn't talk about backsliding for nothing and backsliders. It happens, it's happening all the time. Right. Happens in our own midst, in our own congregation. Mm-hmm. Happens in every church because we're dealing with people. Mm-hmm. We're dealing with an enemy of the people's soul. Amen? So we have a free will to do what we want. Mm -hmm. But this is more of a warning as well as just a message or an encouragement as we'll see in a little bit. But we need to be warned to watch out. We know that's why they have, you notice, the traffic lights. (laughs) 
You know, they have the yellow before the red. It's like a little more, don't go, don't, you know, push the pedal to the metal. You don't want to turn in yellow. And then they get an accident and say, well, we're still yellow, but it was, all, it was ready to turn red. You see, that's how we live our life sometimes. We just got to live it more cautiously, more carefully. Stop running those red lights. Hello? Hello. Amen. See, the body of Christ is, 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 is a lot of body, a lot of the body of Christ is wounded. A lot of the body of Christ is uh, not on top of things. And a lot of them are suffering because uh, the Bible called it, Paul said it was like there was, many of them are shipwrecked and have left them to part of the faith because of the cares of the world. That's right. And the lust of the eyes, the Bible says, First John. And and the, the, the pride of life. That's right. And the lust of the flesh. So there's a lot going on uh, trying to uh, rally for our time to try to, to comp make us compromise what we do for Christ. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. So we see that the world, we know the world is broken. But we don't have to be broken. No. To, you can be unbroken and living in a broken world right. and hopefully making a difference. Yeah. But if you fall into that trap and start to think like the world, no. right. before you know it, you become a part of the world. That's right. Amen. The Bible talks about in the end days a little bit what it's going to look like. And I don't have time to get in all of it, but you can look in the book of Daniel. It talks about the end time. Oh, yeah. Zechariah talks about the end time when we're yes. living in now. The book of Joel talks about it. Matthew talks about it. The book of Revelations especially talks about it. Oh, yes. All the signs. God has done a lot to warn people and his own people. Amen. Of what Amen. the end days are going to look like. And we're looking at them right now. And it's only going to get worse as time goes on. That's right. Because the Bible says in the last days, which I see with my own eyes, hear with my own ears, every night you look at a little bit of the news and you say, my God, that scripture that says they will put good for evil and evil for good. That's right. They will put sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. They will put darkness for light and light for darkness. And that's exactly what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. Calling evil good. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're saying abortions are good. It's a woman's rights. When God says it's evil, it's not good. Bitter for sweet. When the Lord wants us to be sweet instead of bitter. Mm -hmm. And we see hatred that goes along with that bitterness even in our own country we we like living in two americas mm -hmm. we are the one that i grew up in as a child and the one i'm living in now mm -hmm. they're two different totally americas two different things. Okay. split right down the middle mm -hmm. politically and spiritually. and spiritually right and it's been prophesied that these things would happen the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, that the devil knows that his time is short on Amen. the earth. He knows. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's thrown everything at it that he can. And we see the results of that in nations around the world, how they kill their own people, how they rather be hate than to love, mm -hmm. hold grudges instead of forgive. This is all part of the end time. <clears throat> Excuse me, we see that in the book of, way back in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, where the Bible talks about, and then over in Matthew, where Jesus talked about referring to the days of Noah. He said, in the last days, you'll see the same thing that happened in Noah's days, where the violence will cover the face of the earth. And, and we have ISIS today and all these other groups and different things, and just hateful. Killing Christians as we speak. Uh, amen. In other countries, beheading them by the dozens, oh, killing them my. by the thousands, burning their churches down, places of worship. They can't do what we're doing today. And it's getting closer and closer to home. Amen. And we see that all these violence. He said, and then the, uh, the homosexual, he said, the homosexual will, will run rampant and it'll be like the days of Sodom and Sodom Gomorrah. And Gomorrah. And we see now they don't even know what bathroom they want to. Let you oh, go in, my, my God. Yes. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You know what I mean? You don't know. 
that a men's room of women, I see people looking in before they go now and everything. And, I mean, calling good evil and evil good. That's the day we live in. Who would ever dream this possible 30, 40, 50 years ago? You wouldn't even dream it. Even though the Bible predicted it, 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 didn't, it didn't catch up to our times yet like it has now. Now we can understand it more. Now people believe it more because they see it happening in our lifetime, our generation. We see it happening. Amen. That's right. Amen. Right in front of Oh, we can ignore it if you want. We can excuse it away. We can say all kinds of things, but it is what it is, and it's right there in our face. And we have to be able to know how to deal with it. Say, so, well, what are we supposed to do? Number one, we're supposed to pray. Pray, pray for our leaders. Amen. Amen. Pray for our country. Yeah. Pray for a lost world. That's pray right. for what part you're supposed to have in all of this. God, what, do, what, what, what part can I take? I'm only one piece of sand in all the seashores. Amen. But it makes up the seashore. So if all the pieces of sand come together, we can do something. Amen. That's what the body of Christ is supposed to be. Working together. That's why the devil fights so hard. And that's why God said so many times in different ways that he hates discord among the brethren. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest tools and the tricks of the enemy. To get people to hate one another and to be jealous of one another and envious of one another. And Paul said these schisms and bisms should not be in the church. Mm -hmm. He said, I speak this to your shame. These things don't ought to be there. When are we going to grow up? You see, that's what he said. And the truth of the matter is, Satan's having a heyday. He's claimed war on the body of Christ. From the very beginning. But he's also claimed war on the entire world. And we see that all through the scripture. And that's why they talk about the Antichrist and the false prophet. And the beast, Satan himself, that serpent, the dragon, the Bible oh, calls him many names. And the Bible says that he calls many, great and small alike, rich and poor, free and bond, amen, to take the mark of the beast or die. That day is coming. It's right around the corner. We see, again, with all the technology, you can't buy anything. Without something getting scanned. That's right. Without some kind of a, a certificate mm -hmm. to prove who you are, your license or something, or your credit card, or all kind. It's all about the number games because that 666 is right around the corner. Yes. Oh, church, we got to wake oh, up. Oh, yes. God help us. The Bible said we need to redeem the time for the days are evil. Redeem. How do you redeem the time? By making good use of it. Because a lot of times we get so caught up, and we're all guilty, we get so caught up in our own little four and no more, our own world, and, you know, uh, a house and uh, cars and 